Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk to you about something that is seen as a little bit boring, but I genuinely think that it's one of the most important parts of the filmmaking process, and that is file organization. I know, it sounds kind of boring, I get it, I'm bored by it too, but it is one of those necessary evils in the filmmaking process. Whenever you shoot a project, if you're not on top of your file management, uh, things can get one, out of hand really, really quickly, and two, if you lose something, that's on you, right? If you if you go out and shoot a project and it's you know a half day of work, or maybe it's a bigger project and it's multiple days of work that you've accumulated, um, it, it's on you if you lose it, and you're going to be responsible and held responsible by the client. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're on top of all the footage that you get. You want to make sure that you have a clear offloading process, and you want to make sure that you um, keep on top of it. Uh, don't have files just laying around that you might accidentally delete or anything like that you want to make sure that you have a clear system on a project by project basis um, that is streamlined throughout the whole uh, through every single project you have a clear system that you use that doesn't vary necessarily from project to project so any file you open up you can tell right away what you're looking at and what the the content is that you have to deal with um, as well as any edits or exports and anything like that as well um, and so I'll quickly walk you through my process with that everyone has a little bit of a different system and that's totally okay and I encourage you find your own system that works for you what works for me isn't necessarily going to be the thing that works for you um, but I'm just hoping that showing off um, or showcasing what I have found to work for myself um, can give you some ideas about how you can implement this within your own workflow so let's go ahead and dive into the computer let's go into finder and I'll show you how I structure this so let's go ahead and open up finder here and today I'm gonna to walk you guys through what a typical wedding structure would look like for me. Um, and now this is going to be a little bit different um, for weddings compared to other projects, but the reason why I'm showing you guys a wedding is because typically there's a lot of different pieces that you have with a wedding, right? You've got um, photo shoots, you've got first looks, you have all these different kind of pieces. Um, and so I wanna show you what that, what that structure looks like inside of uh, Finder and then what it looks like inside of Premiere as well um, and how I kind of break that down. If you're on a PC and you don't have Finder, it's gonna be the exact same philosophy just in a different application rather than Finder. Um, but the same principles apply so you can still follow along and just might visually look a little bit different. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna uh, show you guys this project that I have. Um, it was for a couple called Mike and Jess. Um, and so you can see right here under one of my SSDs, um, one of my hard drives that we have, the file structure is date. Um, so by year, by month, by day, underscore, and then we have the couple's name. Um, and so I tend to do that even with clients. You'll see all through here, I have different um, dates and then I have different client names um, or project names. And so that's something that I try to do to keep myself organized is I try to uh, label by date and then by client. And that makes it really, really easy after the fact to make sure that I'm putting these projects in the right place when I go and archive them and put them on uh, my HHDs, uh, my regular hard drives. And so uh, you just want things to be in a nice kind of packaged one folder structure. Um, and so you can easily take a whole project and everything that you need for that project will be able to be transferred either into storage or to a different editor or whatever you need to do with it. It's all kind of in one, you know, nice uh, kind of tied up with a bow, one neat package. Um, and so let's go ahead into Mike and Jess and you'll see that we have a four folder structure here. Um, the first is footage. The second is audio, the third is edits, and the fourth is exports. A side note on this is I like to number them. So I have 01 footage, 02 audio, 03 edits, 04 exports. And the reason for that is because in Finder, if you uh, label with numbers first, then it just automatically keeps things in order. Otherwise, it will do it alphabetically. Um, and so audio would come first, um, and then you would have edits and then footage, um, or and then edits, then exports, then footage. Um, and so you, you don't want it to choose for you. You just want it to, to be clearly laid out in a, in a um, order that works for you. Um, and so for me, I like to deal with all my footage first, then my audio, then my edits, then my exports. So for me, this is just a clear kind of order um, of how I like to work. And so I just label these by number. It helps a lot, seriously, just going in and making sure that everything is already in order for you. Um, and so under footage, I have labeled by camera. 
Um, you'll see that I have some other kind of assets in here. Um, don't worry too much about those right now. These are just miscellaneous pieces and that's why they're not in a folder structure. Um, and if I had many, many mis miscellaneous pieces, then I would really put the effort in to make sure that I label those um, and put them in a folder structure. But right now, you know, we have four different assets that are miscellaneous and so it's fine. I just dropped that in the overall footage bin. Um, and you can see there for the reception, there was a sister that was kind of virtually giving a speech, but it wasn't over a video. It was just, um, it was just kind of the audio for it. Um, that was, uh, it was kind of an interesting process. One of the maids of honor was giving a speech and then interspersed with her speech, she would play an audio file um, from the sister of the groom. And so we just had kind of like a photo that we were gonna use to kind of overlay that on top of when she was speaking. So at least we see a face. Um, and then we had a virtual best man speech that was played over video um, during the reception. And so we have that that we got from the couple. Um, we also have um, the, the audio, the, it's, it it is a video, but it, the video wasn't very good and so we didn't really use it. Um, but we have the audio from that sister's speech. Um, and then finally, we just have our motion graphic that we use for our logo um, at the end of our wedding videos. And so just some miscellaneous pieces there. Um, now let's dive into the actual footage. And so the way that I organize in Finder is different than the way that I organize in Premiere. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, and so first of all, in Finder, I label by camera and then by card. Um, and so you'll see I have C70 um, and then I have the footage under that. We just had one card for it. So I have all the footage from there. Um, you'll see that I have this proxies folder. That's just because in the edit, I went ahead and I created proxies um, for this project because sometimes the XFAT C70 footage is, uh, yeah, it's a little bulky and it's kind of hard to edit. Um, and so sometimes I need to proxy that out, especially if it's anything shot in 4K. Um, and then I have my GH5 footage, same thing. I just have some proxies. I don't know, it, sometimes I proxy, sometimes I don't. I find with really long form content, I will tend to proxy like for ceremonies or reception content, I will proxy just because it's so bulky and when you're editing those in multicams um, and the footage is so long and the, the files aren't like the most ideal for editing, um, it just tends to bog down the computer. So it's honestly faster to just like leave your files overnight, let them proxy, and then you can just go into the edit and not have to worry about anything glitching out or you know any hiccups happening in the edit itself. Um, and so I had two GH5s running um, during the ceremony. So I have GH5 one, GH5 two. Um, there's only one clip from each. And so I just put that directly in that GH5 folder. We had a GoPro clip from the couple. Um, they were kind of like, a fun couple, they like to party, all of that. Um, and so they had this thing called a buckshot, which was my first time learning about it, but it's basically like an antler that they had a shot glass on the end of it. Um, and so the couple took a few shots um, and they had this GoPro recording on the end of that antler. So you can add a POV perspective. Um, and so I thought that was kind of fun. Obviously we didn't use a lot of it, but it did work its way into the highlight video. Um, it was just kind of a fun, fun little footage piece to put in there. Um, and then we had the Komodo. And so the Komodo was the main camera we were shooting on. We offloaded at two different stages. So we had two different cards that we used um, under that. You can see that um, as per usual with Komodo clips, um, we have a folder for each clip. And then under that we have the metadata and the file itself. We were shooting ProRes because weddings are bulky and shooting red raw for a wedding is just, there's too much footage to work with in that raw format. And you have too quick of turnaround times um, and you just don't have the allocation to edit for, you know, days and days and days. It's like, I'd probably get a wedding edit done in a day or less. Um, and so you, you need to have file formats that actually work to edit with. And, uh, and that is really nice with the Komodo. I don't have to proxy anything. It's already shot in ProRes. Um, even if it's 4K, it plays back really smooth when you're working on Apple. Um, and so that is great. Um, and then we have our second card as well, same kind of thing. And then we have our Mavic footage, the drone footage. We proxy that because DJI footage sucks to work with. I don't know if there's a way that they can make that better. I would love that. That would be awesome if they can make their files a little bit more manageable. Um, but until then we proxy. And so we have our uh, footage from the Mavic 2 and then we have our proxy files for that as well. Um, again, proxies won't be here initially when you offload. These are created um, in this folder once you actually proxy through Premiere um, and it encodes through Media Encoder, then this proxy folder will be created um, if you have your settings to that, which I believe 
leave as the default. Um, it'll just end up in this folder with those proxy files, um, and then you can just toggle your proxies on and off. Um, if you want to know more about that, I can do that in a different video. Um, but anyway, proxy save your life. That's my little side note with that is uh, proxies make editing so, so much easier. Um, and then under audio, we have our main kind of folders that we had here before I went and added other um, footage in is we have our DR10L1, 2, and 3, and then our DR40. So the DR10Ls are just the lav mics. I'm wearing one right now. Um, during a wedding, there's three different mics that we will use. We'll put one on the bride, and we do that as soon as she puts her dress on. Sometimes we'll even have the mic on her before she puts her dress on, just on her gown or what have you, um, just so that we can get some candid moments with her um, before she puts the dress on. And then once she puts the dress on, we have this um, kind of procedure that we use where we uh, have the recorder actually like taped to her leg. A bridesmaid helps out with that so that you know it's not weird um, with me or another guy kind of helping her on with that. Um, and then we just have the mic kind of running up and taped to the inside of her dress using these little stickies that you can buy on Amazon. Um, the second mic goes on the groom and we do that as soon as he kind of gets dressed, puts his blazer on or his shirt, whatever he's wearing. Um, and we just have that clipped onto him, have that rolling from prep onwards. And then we have the third mic, which is for the officiant, which obviously we put on the officiant just prior to the ceremony. And that way um, for the ceremony, we just have audio covered always. Um, we also usually will run to DR40 if they have an audio system. Um, and so if there's a DJ or some sort of house system that we can plug into, we will do that with the DR40, which basically via XLR, quarter inch cables, you can just plug in, set your levels, um, and that is great. Um, you'll see under all of these that we have these kind of like duplicate files. Um, and the reason for that is on both the DR10Ls and the DR40, um, you can basically put a setting in where it does dual record. And so every time that you press record, it actually creates two files. Um, and the reason that you would do that is you can set these to different gain levels. Um, and so during a day when you can't always be there monitoring the audio, this comes in really, really helpful, um, where if someone shouts or laughs really loudly or something like that, um, you can have a secondary audio file that is gained down by, you know, 6 dB, 12 dB, something like that. Um, and then you can pull from that if the audio clips at any moment. Um, and so that is very, very helpful. It's a good safety to have. And we do that for both the DR10Ls and the DR40. The DR40 we will also use at the reception to plug into the main sound system to make sure that we get the speeches, um, entrances, all that kind of stuff. Um, the dances, the audio is usually being played through that system. Make sure that you double check this with the DJ or whoever has that set up. Um, this can differ from venue to venue. Sometimes the DJ is handling all the audio, sometimes they have speeches going through the house system and then the DJ is handling music. And it's good to communicate these things before a wedding um, and just make sure that everything, if you can, is consolidated through one system. Um, if not, you need to make sure that you have enough recorders to handle the different systems um, that have audio coming out of them. Um, the other option is to, you know, sometimes we resort to this, is you have the DR40 plugged into the main system, then as a safety you have like a DR10L or something like that, um, just kind of like on the podium, or you can actually tape it onto like a handheld mic or something like that, which isn't the prettiest, um, but it's better than having no audio at all. Um, which in some venues is kind of the option other than that, right? Like some venues, um, they won't even let you plug into their system or their system absolutely sucks and the audio isn't usable. Um, and so at least you have something doing that option, though it's not the most visually pleasing. At least you have a mic kind of taped onto there. You know that you're capturing uh, whatever people are saying because that's the worst case scenario, right? You, you film a wedding, uh, you film a reception and you don't have any audio to pull on and your onboard camera audio is not going to cut it. Um, and so what do you do in that situation? You apologize profusely to the client, um, but the better option is just to plan ahead and make sure that that doesn't happen and have redundancies. Um, anyway, moving on from there, uh, you can see that we have these other kind of folders in here. These are just sound effects that I kind of added in. Um, if I had a whole bunch rather than just two, I would probably create a folder called SFX, and then I would put both this riser and this and then I put this riser and this nature sound effect in there. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it because that doesn't really matter to me right now. This project is already done. Um, and then I have, uh, I have these two other sound effects here that would go in that same kind of folder. Um, and then I have uh, 
all our music that we kind of pulled from. Um, some of this music I used, some of it I didn't. This is just stuff that I pulled from Artlist um, to see what I had to work with and see what songs would work with the other ones. Um, and so I could bring this also into a separate folder and call it music. Um, that would probably be the better option than having these all laid out here, but when you're working quickly, sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, but in an ideal deal world, you know, we take all these um, and then we would just call that music and call it a day. And that would be our folder structure. Our third folder is our edits. And so under here, when you create a edit file in Premiere and you save it to this destination, um, you will get you know, your edit file created. You'll also eventually get these subfolders created as well with your autosave and stuff like that and your previews and renders and stuff like that. Um, something to note here is I have multiple versions. This is why we have an edits folder, plural, um, not just an edit. Um, and the reason for that is one, sometimes you'll have multiple edit, like say you have a project and there are multiple different deliverables that you have and for some reason you can't work on the same or, or different timelines within the same project, you actually need to create a, a separate project. Maybe it's just based on size. Um, maybe your projects just get so hairy that you actually need to start a new project um, to edit the separate video or something like that. Um, or in this case is um, sometimes what happens because Premiere is so lovely and reliable and uh, it never crashes at all um, is um, you get that horrible little message that pops up that says Premiere has or, or Premiere has encountered a very serious issue. Um, would you like to file a report or not? We all know that message. Um, unfortunately, on this project, I was well acquainted with this message and I don't know why, but for some reason Premiere kept crashing and so I had to create some new versions um, when it kind of like auto saved to make sure that I didn't lose my work. Um, and so here you can see I worked all up all, all the way up to a, a version six. And so that was a very annoying process. Um, eventually I managed to kind of work the bugs out, but yeah, it sucks when Premiere does that. Sometimes on a random project, it just chooses to bug out. Um, and that sucks. I wouldn't say that it's very common. Like I don't deal with this all the time. Um, like the last time I probably dealt with this was like six months ago, but it does happen and you need to be prepared for when it does happen. Hence the, the plural edits folder. Um, you can have these different kind of versions um, of these edits in here. The next folder is our exports. Um, and so you'll see that we have um, three different exports here. Whenever we deliver a wedding, these are the three exports that a client will get. We have our ceremony, we have our highlight and our reception video. And so full length ceremony, right? We have a multi-camera multi setup. Um, we're just editing multi-cams with that. Pretty much the same thing with reception. Um, we just do a full length version of the reception with the speeches, dances, cake cutting, all that good stuff. Um, and then we have the highlight video, which is really what the clients are paying for. That's like the three to five, sometimes a little longer. Um, highlight video where just as a recap of the day, we pull pieces from the ceremony, the reception, dances, you know, any, any you know, narrative content that we can, we just have little blurbs in there. Um, and then we also have B-roll and tell a story with it and all of that. And so that's the, uh, you know, the pricey one, that's what the clients are really paying for at the end of the day, is that video, that's the one that goes on social media and they share, share it with all their friends and all of that good stuff. Um, and so that is the folder structure within, um, within Finder, right? Obviously our exports aren't gonna be there until we export, obviously our edit, or edit folder won't have anything in it, in it until we create our edit with Premiere. Um, but assuming that we know how to do that, you know, we know how to open up Premiere, create something new, save it to a folder, all that. Um, let's dive into Premiere and I'll show you what my breakdown looks like inside of there. Okay, so here we are inside Premiere. And so we have a similar folder structure, kind of four folder structure um, to start with here. Um, but it's a little bit different than in Finder, right? And so you can see that we have 01 footage, just like in Finder, 02 audio, just like in Finder, 03. So instead of um, edits, we actually have this graphics folder. And under this, um, there's a few things that would go in here, right? Like we would have our logo that we had. Um, we would have our um, like adjustments, uh, adjustment layers that we create, um, or if we created like a black video layer, anything like that, that's kind of like a graphic that's created, like anything through here that you would create like a color map or anything like that um, would go in this folder as well as any um, graphics. If you're working like, like on a corporate video or something like that, it would be like logos and branding and stuff like that. Um, and then we also have the sequences folder. 
And so let's go ahead and break down these folders and see what I have going on in here. So under our footage folder, um, it's a little bit different, right? Than, than we had in Finder. In Finder, we organized it by camera and then by card. And the reason why that's different in Finder than it is here is because Finder, we want to make sure that we keep track of all the footage that we've shot, right? Like we don't need to organize it for editing. We don't need to organize it so that we know where like specific parts of the day are, but what we need to organize it by is, is to make sure that we've offloaded correctly. Right? And so we want to make sure that there's no cards missing. We want to make sure that every card, every camera that we had in the day is accounted for. Um, so we don't need to go and make more trouble for ourselves in Finder by, by now breaking up our footage and categorizing it by, um, you know, by, uh, you know, the first look or the ceremony or interviews or whatever, right? Like we don't need to go and make more of a headache for ourselves. So we're going like, okay, which card was it on? Like that I shot that interview. Like we just want to make sure that what's in Finder matches the way that we would like bring a card in and see all the footage that's laid out. Um, we want that to be as easy as possible. So if we miss something, we can easily find out where the problem is. But in Premiere, it's different, right? In Premiere, we want to optimize for editing. And so what I would do is I would open up Finder, I would drag my footage and my audio um, kind of folders in, and that would create the same folder structure that we have here. And then from this folder structure, um, uh, with camera and cards, we can then go and create um, our folder structure um, here in Finder. And so we can just drag our clips into the appropriate bins and then we can have that organized separately in Premiere here. And so what I start out with is just having all the cameras in here and then I go and create these folders, right? So I have ceremony, reception, interviews, first looks, um, and B-roll. And then for this wedding, we had someone shooting BTS. So we also have some BTS. Um, that isn't necessarily applicable for this specific project, but we will draw on that for a later edit. Um, so we don't really need to worry about that right now, but whatever, it's there. Um, so typically you would just have these folders and this could look a little bit different depending on the wedding that you shoot. Like you might have um, more categories than this or you might have less depending on what you shot for. If you did letter readings, you would have a folder that would be for letter readings. Um, so this is, this is trying to break it up. Like B-roll is everything that is b-roll right it's like not narrative content um, and then these folders are all narrative pieces that need to be synced right these are pieces that i need to bring audio in and the video and sync it up um, and then we'll draw on that for the narrative kind of story arc that we're creating um, as well as for the ceremony and reception we'll have long form edits with those and so we're just trying to break this up a little bit right um, make it a little bit easier to find what we need and make sure that all the kind of like related content is together um, and so our ceremony we're going to have our different cameras and so you know we have these different cameras in here we would create those same kind of camera structures inside this folder i would drag all my c70 stuff from the long form um, long form ceremony content in here so i had like three different files from that that our guy shooting c70 was uh created um, we have our gh5 clips right and then i have my komodo um, so that's our ceremony taken care of. Then I would move on to finding that stuff in the reception. The, the easiest way to do that is um, I just have this kind of like easy system within my project window where I just have my frame rate and my media duration um, kind of visible here. And the reason for that is these really help in finding out what footage is what. Um, I go down and I'm like, okay, ceremony stuff. Usually my, all my ceremony stuff or my long format content is in 23.976. Um, and so I can just look for those, those pieces. And then from there I can look and see like, okay, if a clip is like 30 seconds long, it's not going to be long format, right? If I have something that's about 20 minutes, that's about the speed or the duration of a ceremony. And so I'm, my best guess is that's probably a ceremony clip or a reception clip or something like that. And obviously you can click on it and then see what it actually is. Um, and then, uh, sort it that way. But this is just an easy way to find out what you're actually working with. Um, and so anyway, we have our ceremony, we have our reception, again, broken down to different cam cameras. We only use the C70 and Komodo. Um, and so we have all of our footage broken down for that. This is all long format stuff. So again, just distinguish whether it's B-roll or long form. Um, long form would be your speeches, anything that really is gonna end up in your long form reception edit, right? Like anything that you need in that specific edit needs to go in this folder. Um, Next, we would have our interviews. Um, and so at this wedding, we actually did a tiny short little 
blurb like interview with the bride and then we also did one with um, the best man because um, he wasn't actually able to give a regular speech at the reception he had his video speech that he had sent in um, but we wanted something that was a little higher quality and that we could actually put in the video um, and so we did a little interview with him during groom prep so that ended up in this folder as well um, and then we have our first looks there's a first look with the father of the bride and then there's also a first look with the couple themselves um, and so we had two different angles with that. We had the C70 and we had the Komodo, uh, two files for each, obviously, one with the dad, one with the couple. Um, and then under our B-roll, then we start to break this down a little bit further, right? So we're left with, um, once we've sorted all this long format stuff, we would be left with our cameras and then we would uh, need to sort this into these kind of subfolders here. Um, and so we have our bride prep, groom prep, bus shot, ceremony, photo shoot, reception, landscape, and miscellaneous kind of guest shots. Um, so this is stuff that like wasn't happening at the ceremony or reception specifically, but it was kind of shots with like guests throughout the day. Um, and so we just kind of, this again will differ depending on the content that you shot on the day of. Um, but for us, this is the content that we got, right? We, we were covering bride prep, we were also covering groom prep. Um, they had these kind of like buses that were taking them between locations and we had videographers on each bus, um, just capturing the couple kind of interacting with their bridesmaids and groomsmen. Um, and then we had the ceremony itself, we had the photo shoot, reception, uh, landscape shots, just like kind of between locations or at locations. This, um, like our drone footage would be in here. We also had some Komodo shots, just with some like shots of trees and stuff like that. And it's just easier to, when you need that uh, kind of footage that's like a lull between sections and you just need some sort of footage to cover it up, then you can draw on this folder. Um, and then we just had this miscellaneous guest folder, which I don't know if we ended up using any of those shots, but it's just good to have. Um, yeah, so that's basically that B-roll folder structure. And you'll notice like even under um, all of this stuff, unless we only had one camera covering it, um, we have it labeled by camera as well under these folders. And the reason for that is when I'm editing, it's really, really important to know what footage is coming from which camera um, when it comes to color grading, right? Every camera has a little bit of a different color profile. And so it's really helpful to know like, okay, what cameras was I actually working with here? And in a lot of cases, like if I don't need to pull, because we uh, the way that we kind of structure is we have a primary shooter, like a lead, videographer and then um, the second videographer typically is only capturing stuff for multicam kind of sequences like for the reception or the ceremony um, they're not really capturing content for like the photo shoot and stuff like that um, but on the off chance that they manage to get a shot or something like that I want to keep it like I want to make sure that I can draw on that if I'm in a pinch and I need it but for the most part I'm going to be using stuff from our A camera um, because it just makes it easier right it makes the whole process easier um, it's all going to be in the same format for the um, Komodo like it's all shot in ProRes and so it makes it a lot easier for editing I know that it's shot in ProRes um, and then you also um, the color grading is a lot easier right like I have all the the conversion LUTs and all of that um, set up on my adjustment layer for the Komodo as soon as I start introducing different cameras then you're dealing with different color profiles and just complicates the whole process um, and then you need to go in and color match and and you know it's it's a bit more annoying you know if you're drawing from multiple cameras and so both the way that we shoot and the way that we edit kind of tries to streamline everything so that we we take out those extra steps right like that color matching between color profiles if we don't need to do it if we're not dealing with multicams we, we don't want to right we want to eliminate as much as we can um, having different cameras capturing different things um, and so reception and ceremony are usually the only places that we have that um, for the long form content because we need multicam content um, but for all the b-roll for the photo shoot for like groom prep bride prep all of that stuff we try to just use one camera and just have a team that supports that that can help out with lighting and all of that so that we can get the best quality shots of, as possible rather than just getting a lot of different shots that are okay so now moving on to our audio folder, this actually is just going to stay the exact same as we had in Finder. Um, we don't need to break this up, like usually you're not dealing with as many audio clips as you are video clips, and so you don't need to break it down by like subcategories. You can usually just know what you're dealing with pretty easily, like we know that we had three recorders for the ceremony, um, and so one of these is going to be for the groom, one of them is for the bride, one of them is for the officiant, and you can just listen through and you'll be able to tell pretty quickly what's what. Um, and the DR40, like we know that we were recording for the ceremony and then also for the reception. Um, 
Um, and so we can easily kind of sort through that stuff um, and it doesn't take too much time. And once you, you know, have figured it out initially, you're dragging that into your long form sequences anyway. Um, and so once you've organized it, the work's already done. We don't really need to go back to it. Um, and so that is, is fine there. We just leave that as is. Um, the only thing that you'll notice is we have, same as we had in Finders, we have these kind of sound effects folders. We have a couple sound effects that are in here as well as the songs that we were working with. Um, and those are gonna be added, obviously, as we start building this edit out. The next folder is graphics. Again, we have our adjustment layer and our end graphic in there. We didn't need anything else, right? Like we didn't, we weren't pulling any black video layers or any color mats or anything like that. We didn't have any like specific branding that we needed to use. Um, and so pretty simple in the graphics folder. Um, the next is sequences. So this looks pretty not complicated right here, but we actually have a lot more sequences going on than this. Um, so our main sequences that we have, as you can see, is our ceremony, highlight, and reception. So these are our deliverables, right? Like these are um, our long form ceremony edit, our long form reception, and our three to five minute highlight video. Um, and we have a different sequence for each so that we can individually export these out while still having it in the same project. Um, and beyond that, um, we have our nest folder. And so our nest is gonna be, anytime that we create a multicam, because um, you need nest a, uh, clips together in order to create a multicam, so this is our nest folder. Um, so under here we have like specific nested clips that we created. Um, sometimes you need a nest to click, clip to put warp stabilizer on it or something like that. Um, and then also our reception ceremony kind of multicams that we created. Um, and then sometimes you'll put these audio clips that get generated. Um, I use Pluralize and sometimes when Pluralize dissects um, some audio and video clips, um, they'll actually create a secondary audio uh, layer to kind of like cor correct any drift that was, um, that happened over the recording. Um, Cause sometimes you will have a audio clip that just doesn't quite line up with the video like it just got stretched a little bit um, for some reason, just like due to the recording format or something like that. And so Pluralize will actually go ahead and correct that for us um, and take care of that. And so then just creates a kind of replacement audio layer and I throw this in the Nest, uh, Nest folder as well. Um, next is our kind of assembly folder. Um, and so for this, I have these different narrative pieces that we synced as well that ended up in the highlight video, but aren't a deliverable. And so that would be like kind of candid moments that we had with the couple. Um, we had like the first looks that we synced. We had the groom um, kind of like candid moments. We had interviews, you know, like stuff like that, right? Like all these pieces that we needed to sync the audio and video and be able to draw on that content. Um, but it's not gonna end up in an edit itself. So we created a individual sequence sequence for each of these things um, so that we can kind of open those up and pull on those for the highlight video. Um, so that's basically it, right? Like that's, that's our sequences. From here, we would bounce out these three deliverables and that's a completed wedding. Um, now, obviously this is, I talk specifically about weddings a lot in this video. Um, now, Obviously, you just need to use your interpretation to apply this to a documentary or apply it to a corporate shoot or apply it to a talking head sequence, whatever it is, right? Um, it's gonna be similar to this. It just might be more folders, it might be less folders, um, depending on what content you had to work with. Um, the reason I chose a wedding is because there are a lot of different pieces that you capture within it, and so your organization needs to be a little bit more uh, heavy, a little bit more structured. Um, and so under your footage, you know, you're dealing with multiple cameras, you're dealing with multiple pieces of the day, you're dealing with multiple cards that you offloaded, all of that stuff. Um, same with audio and, you know, you have graphics would probably be a little more intense for like a, um, for like a corporate kind of video or something where you had like motion graphics that were in it. Um, that would be a little bit more built out. Um, but the philosophy applies, right? Like you um, just throw it in the graphics folder if you get you know, tons and tons of content going on there, then you break it into subfolders um, in, a, in a way that makes sense. Um, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how I go about organizing things, how I stay on top of all the footage that I have, both from an offloading and storage perspective in Finder, and then also from an editing perspective inside of Premiere. Um, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you in the next one.